Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mac Taylor, Legislative Analyst. And earlier today, uh, my office released the overview of the May revision. This is a document that we put out every year, a few days after the governor releases his May revision plan. And the purpose of the document is really twofold. It's first just to help explain what is in that document. There's a lot going on. There's some things that are changed proposals from January. There's some new things. There's some things he's taken out. So I think just laying out what the, is in the proposal serves a function for our bosses and their staff. Um, but also we offer our initial comments um, to the legislature on how they should think about the proposal as a whole. So let me just summarize some of our key findings and then um, my colleagues and I would be very happy to answer any of your questions. Um, the governor has clearly presented one approach to, to, to addressing our budget problem, and that is one in which he relies on really no new revenues. Uh, and as a result, he's had to make some rather stark choices and propose some rather severe cuts, including the elimination of uh, CalWORKs and child care. Um, we are recommending to the legislature that they not eliminate those two programs. These are core programs that provide uh, income, maintenance, and services to lowest income Californians, and, and we think we should do everything we can to preserve the programs. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't make reductions in them. The legislature has, in fact, made some reductions in these programs, both in the current year and uh, in, in the next year, some of those cuts continue on. And there are other things that we can do and we have suggested, but we don't think the program should be eliminated. Now, in light of that, the, the legislature will need other options on the table in order to help balance the budget. Uh, and we think that there are certain areas where the, the governor has not proposed reductions where the legislature is going to have to look. And the universities is one example where they have uh, $800 million in augmentations over last year, over the current year. Uh, we've also cited the courts, public safety, local assistance grants, or just a, a few areas where the legislature may want to look for additional reductions. In addition, in addition we put uh, certain revenues on the table. We have not recommended increases in tax rates for our three major taxes, the personal income tax, the sales tax, or the corporate tax. But we have put various things on the table, such as non-tax revenue. That would include things like increasing community college fees or the T-Ridge proposal. Uh, we have put on tax expenditures, which are special deductions and uh, exemptions in the tax code, some of which we don't believe are either good tax policy or have been very effective in the way they've been implemented. Uh, we've also put on the table the, um, the delays in some of the corporate tax provisions uh, that were adopted in past budget resolutions. The governor actually had put these on his triggered contingency list in January. Uh, they don't show up in the May revision, but we think those are areas where the legislature could look at to get revenues, uh, even if it were for just a year or two. Um, let me just talk a little bit about the governor's numbers. Uh, I think in some ways the administration deserves credit for the budget they put together in that the numbers we think are, are very reasonable. The problem definition we have no real serious concerns with. His revenue numbers, we think, are very reasonable. Uh, the governor has changed his federal funds assumption from a $6.9 billion one in January, which we said was not achievable, down to $3.4 billion, which is clearly more reasonable. Uh, he doesn't have a, a lot of borrowing or deferrals. The one big item is uh, special fund borrowing, but at least that's kind of within the family, within the state resources. Uh, and not a lot of accelerations or other type of sort of gimmicks and things that we've used in the past. Uh, as far as the economic, underlying economic forecasts, we're very similar to the administration. As a result, our revenues are very close to the administration. We do, however, have some additional revenues in our forecast. 400 million in 910, the current year, and about 1 billion in the budget year. So that's $1.4 billion if the legislature were to adopt our revenue estimates. Uh, in addition, the governor has, as part of his plan, uh, he's included the revenues from the sale of state buildings that is now being considered. If the legislature and the administration decide to go through with that, 
we will actually net more than the 600 million. We think it could be well over a billion. So there's additional 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 revenues there uh, if we go through with that provision. Now any budget is going to have some risk. A budget which is tackling the magnitude of the problem that we have is going to have even more risk. Uh, and, and certainly some of the bigger ones are things like uh, the estate tax pickup revenues. This is where in the past we've been able to grab a piece of what the federal government collects from their estate tax. The, the administration and our office, because it is kind of current federal law, is that the pickup tax will go back into effect at the start of next year. We have included monies in the 1011 budget, about almost 900 million. However, everything we're hearing from Washington is that that pickup provision will not be included. And therefore, we are at risk of losing roughly 900 million dollars. Uh, even though the federal funds assumption is much better, uh, the governor still has 1.6 billion dollars that's not really tied to any particular proposal. And so clearly there's still remaining risk that we won't be able to get the kind of monies to offset our state costs that the governor is assuming. Uh, one of the biggest risks, however, relates to Prop 98. And I want to spend a minute on that. Uh, in January, we said that the governor's proposal then was kind of tenuously held together because of his kind of take on the legal interpretations about what the state owed. This is basically related to the whole maintenance factor issue. Now, in the May revision, the governor has complicated that proposal by assuming that the state can rebench downward the state guarantee because of the child care proposal. That is, if we no longer have that responsibility, we would lower what we owe. Um, we think that all of these kind of assumptions result in some really questionable legal arguments. Uh, and it's really the only way that the governor cl can claim to be funding at the minimum guarantee. We're suggesting to the legislature to take kind of a different approach. And that is figure out what you can afford to spend on schools, just as you have to do on any other major program, and fund it at that level. And if that means funding it at the $49.9 billion level, that's roughly what we're spending in the current year, and spending that again in the budget year, then that's what you should do. It's just that in almost any scenario that we look at, you're going to need to suspend the guarantee, probably in the current year to start off with, potentially again in the budget year. Uh, we think this has some real advantages. It focuses the decisions on what we should be focusing on, and that is how much can we afford to give to schools. It's much more straightforward, uh, and it could even help to clarify eventually the issue on the maintenance factor. And we provide more details in our report. Uh, let me just finish up with talking about our out-year projections, because we always like to take a look at what would happen if the legislature adopted all the governor's proposals. We give them the benefit of the doubt on his assum assumptions about savings. And it's shown in our chart on uh, page 19. And you see that if we did all of that, and remember this is with no cost of living adjustments over the entire forecast period, we would still end up with operating deficits in the $5 billion range. But again, that's kind of a very best case scenario. So given that even after we make some very difficult choices this year, we're still going to be facing operating shortfalls in the near future. What that says to us is the legislature not only needs to take its, you know, take severe and, and difficult actions this year, it should already start thinking about the future, 2011 and 12 and beyond. And there may be some actions where they should start now in order to have those in place to get savings in 11, 12. One of the best examples is something that we've put forward is to change the kindergarten uh, start date. Uh, you need to do that now to let school districts know if it's going to happen, if that's what you decide. Uh, but that could get you, Jen, is it over 300 million, roughly, in savings? It, it can be as much as 700 million. It's really a question for the state as to how much they would want to redirect for preschool. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, but you, it's really wise to do that soon so the school districts know that's happening for 11-12. Um, it may be that uh, we should be considering realignment proposals. The governor, in effect, has put a, a proposal kind of with some of the people that he would ship from state prisons down to local jails. So it's a bit of a realignment saying these could be handled locally. But there are other possibilities, and my office has put uh, several proposals on the table in past years, not only in the criminal justice areas, but we've considered things in the health and social sciences areas. So I, I think that's uh, um, a really important thing that the legislature could look at now for possible future savings. 
Uh, and finally, it, there may be things that uh, have been talked about, such as our pension systems, our retiree health care, that we could take actions now that will start to achieve savings in, the, in future years. But I think we do have to keep an eye on the future as we're solving a very, very serious problem in 2010-11.